Thank you for coming along today and uh, tuning into this channel. This is going to be the beginning of my video log um, for YouTube on this channel, um, all about my gardening. And, uh, you know, if you're like me, uh, you have interest in uh, gardening. And in particular for me, I like doing uh, tropical and subtropical gardening. And so I'm going to show you uh, kind of where I'm at in the stage of this property that I've been at for about three years now. Um, I've had other gardens uh, that I've invested the money and time into and uh, moved from those properties onto subsequent properties and try to bring what I can with me. And unfortunately though, every time you move, there's only so much you can take with you and things that will tolerate that transfer and uh, you have to kind of start over again. So on the north side of this property, I have uh, bamboo. This is timber bam bamboo, uh, old hami. Bambusa old hami. Um, grows very tall I think because of this Southern California climate that they don't uh, get to their fullest potential of I think it's 80 feet and uh, four or so inches diameter but they're getting close their biggest ones that I have here are up to uh, probably three inches in diameter close to it at least anyway uh, then I have uh, various clusters of uh, this uh, ice cream or blue java banana I have here uh, this is passion fruit vine Passiflorea uh, edgeless, I believe, if I pronounced that right. And I do get fruit off this every year, um, some years more than others. And you can see the flowers, uh, the Passiflorea flowers uh, right here. Uh, soon to be planted is this fig tree. I just picked this up to, uh, today on, uh, I think it's FigBid website. Uh, this is uh, a particularly um, tasty, uh, berry flavored fig that's called uh, Unknown Pastulary. Uh, I had a hard time finding it, but I did find it on FigVid from a, another person here, a local gentleman in uh, Irvine, and I picked that up today. So that's going to be going in the ground after it gets acclimated to being in full sun because it hasn't been in full sun. Uh, this is a keet or kite, however you pronounce it, uh, mango uh, I got from Armstrong's. Uh, it's grafted here off of a rootstock. And unfortunately, I think that the grafting was too high on the rootstock. And so I've had a lot of growth coming off the rootstock and not so much here off of the actual um, scion. And uh, it's been struggling to really get much growth. And this has been here for a good year and a half, well, maybe even almost two years. And it's really not, uh, I did have fruit on here, but I pulled them off because I want the energy trying to go back into the plant growth. So we'll see. Um, here's another one of my ice cream bananas, or I think they call job, blue java bananas. Um, that one's gonna be going in the ground. The previous one I showed you is going to a friend at work who asked for it. Uh, this is a vanilla mango, uh, which was just planted this year. I've got already probably 12 plus inches of growth uh, since it was planted. I believe when I planted it, well, a month or two ago, it was about here in height and then we're already up here so again a good close to 12 inches of growth off that this is where i'm going to be planting the fig tree but uh it's not ready to go on the ground yet today i just picked this up in the last couple weeks this is a uh, fruit punch mango so it's a grafted mango tree they use a basic root stock on the bottom probably the manila and then they add to it here on the top portion although this one like i unlike the other one is grafted way down in here on the bottom uh, you can't even see but it's way down there in the bottom where it's grafted so the majority of this trunk here that you see is is actually the fruit punch mango tree so um, supposedly this fruit tastes very uh a lot of different uh, fruit tones and it kind of has an overall fruit punch taste to it i have here um a dragon fruit um this was a big box store purchase it's supposed to have the purple or reddish colored interior fruit. I don't know what variety it is because again, it was a, a, a big box store and it didn't have that kind of detail on it. And then here I have a cluster of three with additional branches off of it. This is a um, Hawaiian papaya tree. I get lots of papayas off of it. Um, they taste good, but myself and my family, we're not particularly into uh, papayas too much. Uh, they do have a bit of a what some people describe my family describes as a footy flavor not not really flavored it's footy smell the flavor actually is still very much like a melon like a cantaloupe uh, but more sweet 
um, but it's just not really particularly favored by my family. So most of these fruits go either to our pet lizard, which is a bearded dragon, or they go to co-workers who do enjoy the fruit. Um, and occasionally my wife uses the green papaya to make the uh, salad, the Asian salad with, uh, anyway, it's good. I don't know all the ingredients. And then here uh, I have a guava tree. This is quite large. Again, it was planted here um, as just a, I don't know, a five gallon, not even, maybe not even five gallon, two gallon container. When I moved in three years ago, that was one of the first trees to be planted. It's gotten quite large in, despite being trimmed regularly. Uh, well, at least every year anyway. And uh, gets lots of good um, green, which then when ripe turns to yellow exterior and then a pinkish, whitish pinkish interior uh, fruit. It's very sweet, um, very, very uh, guava-like flavor. And then here I have a brand new, was purchased at the same time as the uh, the uh, Fruit Punch Mango. This is a Yosemite Gold or Yosemite Gold Nugget uh, Mandarin. Um, again, only been in a few weeks. It seems to be adjusting well to this location. It's got lots of new flowers on it, some new growth on it. Um, previous uh, uh, fruit that was on it when I purchased it have fallen off and so I don't know I don't necessarily expect any fruit to come this year but if I do that'll be great and then I'm gonna go on to one of my favorite trees so far um, this is my Malaysian red guava tree um, I like it because uh, the very nice reddish or burgundy color to the leaves um, different kind of I like the reddish colored uh, plants and then on top of that, the fruit, um, the actual fruit on the outside is mostly green. It kind of gets a little reddish hue when it's ripe. And then inside is a nice dark burgundy uh, color to it. And the fr fruit is very sweet, slight tart uh, guava. So very, very dessert-like kind of guava. Um, this was planted last year. Uh, so this is the second season of fruiting. It had maybe three or four fruit even in that first year. And now I've probably got at least a probably a good dozen or two dozen of uh, f flowers on it. I don't have any actual blooming flowers, I don't think at the moment to show you what those look like, but they're very bright pink color. Um, and the fruit comes in, let's see, this is moving around. Sorry about that, the wind's moving quite a bit. You can kind of see the fruit forming here at the base of this flower. Another of our favorite plants, of course, uh, would be most people would enjoy uh, avocado. This is the only tree that was present here on the property when I bought it three years ago. It was pathetic, a uh, little tree sitting maybe uh, two feet off the ground and maybe a foot and a half wide. Um, just was very neglected and I immediately uh, identified it as a permanent tree to have here in the yard. I had it protected as the pool was being built um, and I fertilized and watered it regularly and now I get off season I get probably 60 to 80 avocados and then on season um, this will be the third season I've had avocados and I'm probably looking to get 150 to 200 avocados off this we'll show you kind of how they look now as they're coming in the avocados right now are if I can get in here or not so you know thumb size thumbnails well Pretty decent size. Let's go to over here, little larger ones. Here we go. This one's quite a bit larger already. It's already, I don't know, two inches in diameter. So, and they're just, this tree is just laid in full of, of this size fruit. Uh, many of these start and then drop off when they're smaller size. But I believe when they get to this size, typically they're usually gonna stay on. So the smaller ones, I probably lost three, two, 300 fruit in the beginning that were smaller. And these are the ones now that have kind of definitely set in and should survive. And these won't be ready, even though right now we're at the end of June, these will not be ready to be picked um, until probably October, probably October, maybe early November, then they'll start uh, they'll start uh, ripening when you pull them off and put them in a bag. They grow very quickly though. Um, they about double their size and diameter about every month, uh, which seems to me to be pretty quick. Now over here into this corner, um, we've got another one of our ice cream bananas. Back there in the back is the variegated rubber tree. Uh, we have lots of plumerias of various colors. Uh, maybe we'll go into more detail on some of the plumeria varieties in another video. Uh, we've got this torch uh, 
bougainvillea. Um, it's not a fruiting, obviously, but it's very, uh, very colorful flower. No smell to it, just very colorful. And I like the way it uh, structurally, how it branches out instead of just being like a traditional bougainvillea that grows in every direction as a big hedge. The torch uh, is more of a stick-like formation structure and you can shape it uh, into various shapes that you want to shape it into. Uh, behind that, I have many of these angel trumpets. These were brought from two prior homes, transferred from one to the other of my prior homes. Um, I bought it probably a good 10 plus years ago, probably much more than that. Um, and it would have been probably around 2002, 2003. So and this is 2021, so much longer. Anyway, it's very easy to take clippings of this, put it in water, get it to root, stick it in the ground and grow more of them and then give them to friends. And this is the uh, Charles Grimaldi variety, uh, which is a yellow leaf. This here is one of my favorite plumeria. Um, and fortunately it got broken and knocked down and I had to stick the broken pieces in the ground, which have made it. Um, this location is not the most ideal because it's underneath the, the uh, Rugmanzia tree. Uh, so you get some shade, but gets a, a really cool looking flower. It's like a rainbow uh, pattern. I think they, uh, I might, it might be like a candy stripe, I believe is one of the varieties that looks like this. Uh, so it could be the candy stripe. Uh, I had a friend give me lots of, uh, a few canna lilies, a couple, two and a half to three years ago. And um, these things grow like weeds. That's great because they fill in holes until you maybe get more permanent plants that you want to put in, but they're very colorful. They fill in quickly. They're drought tolerant, lots of different colors um, and varieties. Uh, this is uh, one of the plumeri I have. I don't know the name of it. It's one of the most prolific uh, bloomers that I have. Um, this thing blooms pretty much uh, eight to nine months out of the year here in Southern California. It uh, branches very quickly because of all the blooming. Because every time you get a bloom, that's where you branch. And I got a lot of green growth. So I've actually cut this several times. I got more of these uh, that I stuck in the ground in the front yard. Uh, behind there, another plumeria. This was store-bought from a big box store. Don't know the variety. Um, it looks similar to the candy stripe. I don't think it is candy stripe, but it's similar to it with a rainbow kind of color. This one's doing really well. Um, has not yet flowered this year, but there are some uh, flower buds coming in up there. Uh, over here, we got another ice cream banana. We got uh, interposed queen palms in here. Um, I can't remember the name of this flower right now. It gets a very large, um, very large yellow flower, uh, soleus or something like that. I'll have to look it up. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, here we have Exora. Um, I've always found this to be challenging because it's hard to get the pH right for the soil and the water schedule right and the lighting right for it. Uh, this one gets full sun. Seems to do well here next to the pool. Um, with pretty frequent watering and it's getting ready to flower really nice looking flowers that will be coming in soon so I'll have to do another video when those are up and I'll give more details on that plant uh, this is another one of my favorites here uh, this is Queen Emma uh, crinum lily uh, this is something I mail ordered uh, from Aloha Tropicals another great source for, for some tropical plants I bought this uh, probably it was a good five or six years plus ago. Um, just a small little pup when I got it in the mail, which looks something like this here. These are pups. And then it got very large. This is not even the original plant. Um, great looking, smelling, and colorful flowers on it. Lots of pups. So I'll be, uh, I'll be probably breaking off pups and giving them away and or selling them to people here before too long. And I've got probably larger plants like this. There's probably a good six of them without me actually doing a formal count here along the edge of the pool and they do great uh here's the tropicana lily or tropicana canna lily uh another plumeria here uh this is a quarter line uh also known as a wine tea plant i like this one here because it's a mix a good mix of pinkish red and green um i think they called this sherbet or it could have been harlequin i can't remember because i bought the two different varieties and I'm a little confused about which one was the harlequin and which one's a sherbet. I would think in my mind's eye this looks more like a sherbet than a harlequin but whatever you you want to call it. Um, here again another trinum lily very colorful burgundy color to it for the for the flesh of the leaves. 
Um, this one here, another Aloha Tropical that I uh, plant that I bought. Uh, this is a wandering or traveling palm. Um, it's not actually truly a palm tree. It's all very similar to the uh, uh, bird of par giant bird of paradise, but this gets uh, very fan shaped. You see these a lot in Hawaii, a large fan. And I want to go into more detail about that later. This is a uh, yellow colored uh, flowered plumeria here. Uh, no flowers at it yet, but it's just about, if you look back in here, it's going to be flowering very soon. Some nice big buds coming in there. All right, and as we move down through here, we got some more Exora. Uh, this is a really cool uh, cutting that I got. It was only about eight inches tall about a year and a half, two years ago, and now standing a good three feet, almost four feet tall. This gets a nice deep uh, colored red burgundy flower on it. Um, I don't remember the, the variety that they sell these now, um, but I will try to get more details on that later. Uh, we got more tea leaf plant here. Uh, we got more of the uh, Brugmansia or Angel Trumpet, Charles Grimaldi. Uh, we got the Elephant Ear growing here. Probably should have been put into a little more shade than this. It's a little too much sun. It was in the sun, full sun at a big box store, and I took that as an indication that it could tolerate it. But uh, you can see it's getting a little burned on the edges here. Um, I think it will probably be able to remain in this spot, but I have to keep it watered regularly. And ideally, hopefully I'll get some more shade from additional plantings before long. Uh, don't know the name of it at the moment. We got uh, some ginger back here, flowering ginger. And then behind that we have the, um, this is a heliconia and uh, the variety is fire and ice. I don't remember the scientific name for it. Um, I don't, I have not had any flowers on it yet that I know of. I don't know that I'll get them because these bracts or the, the, the actual stems have to be present for more than one season. And even though these are surviving more than one season, you can see that the sun really burns the leaves. The dry air that we have here really um, burns the leaves heavily. And so um, I get a lot of good growth. The plants do survive through a season, but they never seem to get where they're doing well enough to flower, at least as of yet. Uh, down here, we got uh, the Thai, um, uh, for the Thai giant, they call it, uh, elephant ear. Um, this was a bulb that I got from a big walk store. Uh, this corner of the yard doesn't really get a whole lot of water. I try to keep it water regularly. I think if it got more water, these elephant ears would be much larger than they are at the moment. And this is the second season. They, they were put in at the end of last season, and this is the beginning of the second season for these uh, elephant ears. So they should get bigger before uh, the end of this growing season, which will be somewhere around uh, late September, early October. Uh, this is my uh, flamethrower palm. Uh, can't remember at the top of my, uh, at the top of my uh, memory right now what the scientific name of this is. I'll try to include that, but uh, really cool uh, palm tree that gets uh, this, this, this uh, flower, or not flower, I, I take that back, sorry, this branch here, petiole, whatever you call it, uh, that will get a nice uh, burgundy to pink color when it opens. Uh, this is the I did actually have this one open on last year and it did not have the red color. Occasionally, these are known to not get color in them and it may or may not get color every year. Um, I'm hoping that this year when this one opens up, um, it will have color. Uh, we have croton growing here next to that. Um, underground here, it's not doing so well where this flag is. I have uh, another type of uh, elephant ear, more of the ice cream banana. Uh, we have, I believe, uh, let's see, what was the name of this elephant ear? Uh, this one has it's Black Star, I believe they call it. It has this, this trunk on it or stem that is this nice deep dark purple color. Um, Black Star, and I get them confused, the alocasia versus the calocasia. I know it shouldn't be that easy because, or that hard because it has to do with the way the leaves are shaped. Given that this one's pointing upward, I believe that's the alocasia variety. Um, but don't quote me on that. Um, and then here we have the more of the original ice cream banana. All these ice cream banana trees came from um, an original purchase that I made through the Aloha Tropical. 
Uh, they, they get lots of pups on them. I move them from house to house. I give them to friends and move them around the yard because they're just so fast and, and beautiful growing. And this, this season, I've, I've already had so many bananas coming in. You can see this large cluster right here. This is just opened in the last uh, couple weeks. Um, I harvested already a cluster. There's another one that's hanging over in the neighbor's yard that I'm gonna have to harvest soon. And I get like 80, these, this, this cluster right here is gonna weigh probably between 60 and 80 pounds easily. Um, lots of fruit, got to give a lot of it away. I freeze some of it after I peel it. Um, anyway, it's an amazing plant. Um, and then here we have uh, one of my mothers who's, my mother has passed away and, and my wife love also these uh, double delight roses. They're just amazing amount of color, amazing amount of smell to them. Um, rosy smell to them and, and so they both my my wife and my my mother uh, love those uh, now we have uh, another of the elephant ears again can't remember the, the variety of this uh, believe it's alocasia lustrious but I, I don't remember for sure um, it, it the the pattern usually in the shade is a little bit more of a variegated pattern but here in the full sun the color becomes much more saturated with that purplish color and then just the green eye in the center of it. And then there's a mojito variety that's growing right back in here. I don't know if I can get it next to this flag. You can kind of see it with the speckled leaves on it. Um, this is going to be the second season. This was a mail order. Uh, died back for the winter and just in about the last two weeks it's been coming back up. So hopefully that'll get going really good before the end of the season and get a good bulb established in the ground. But it did, it did die back, overwintered, and came back out again this year. All right, uh, this video is getting a little long. I'm gonna move forward a little bit here. Um, we got the white sapote tree right here. This was bought from a big box, box store. It's uh, the Vernon variety. Um, this is going to be the second summer that it's gonna go through. I've had it for one summer already. And I have one of my first fruits on this tree that are coming in. I don't know if I can zoom in enough here that you're going to be able to see this fruit or not. Let me get a little closer. There it is. So that's the first fruit I've had. Um, this will have to get about two to three times bigger and then will turn slight yellowish color and then get really soft and then I'll be able to eat it. And I'll try to do a video when I, when I have that first fruit for that. Um, then I have over here more of the Brugmansia. Uh, the, the uh, Charles Grimaldi. I like to train it into this sort of umbrella shape pattern, but you can kind of shape it any way you want. We got some um, fuchsia growing here. It's almost too much sun, uh, but it is surviving underneath the shade of this uh, Brugmansia. Uh, more of those uh, same dragon fruit that I showed you in the beginning of the video that I've taken cuttings of and I'm stuck on the ground. I want to try to grow them up here off the fence and have them hang off and produce fruit there. So I'm going to wrap up this video um, of, of my garden for today. Um, I have a lot more to show you. This is just the backyard and I'll go into individual segments too on specifics of certain plants as we, as, as, as the garden matures during the summertime. But I thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Also subscribe if you'd like to hear more about this garden as it develops and grows. And again, thank you for tuning in. Bye for now.